The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. I'd like to read you something. The label on a loaf of Merida old-fashioned enriched white bread. And I quote, Enriched means that eight ounces of this bread supplies the following percentages of minimum daily requirement for these essential food substances. Thiamine, vitamin B1, 90%. Riboflavin, vitamin B2, 66%. Niacin, another B vitamin, 75%. Iron, 62.5%. Calcium, 20%. But that's just the outside story. What goes into Merida old-fashioned white bread is another story. A story of a rich old recipe. A recipe that produces an old-fashioned bread that's rounded at the top with a crust that's golden brown. Firm yet tender, moist, and very delicious. So when you buy a Merida Old Fashioned Enriched White Bread, read what's on it and remember what's in it. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! Thunder Martin, a former mule skinner, worked as top hand on Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch, located several miles south of Rock City, in the mountainous part of western Texas. In a woods on the opposite side of Rock City, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, two good friends of Thunder and Clarabelle, had made camp. Tonto had ridden to the express office at the railroad station in town to send a package to the Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, who was attending school. Here you are, Angel. This package will leave here on the train tomorrow morning. I wish I could say the same for the dynamite that's on the station platform. Do you know what dynamite is? Ah, uh, me hear of it. It's a newfangled explosive, about ten times as powerful as blasting powder. And there's a thousand pounds of the stuff on that platform. Twenty cases. Enough to blow Rock City clean off the map. I'll sure be glad when it's moved. Say, Howdy, Thunder. Oh, Thunder Martin. Toto, well, <laughs> sakes alive. You're a sight for sore eyes. Where's your partner? Uh, him camp north of town. Him say we visit Hornblow Ranch. Well, that'll be fine. Uh, say, Pete, shake hands with my friend Tonto. Tonto, this is Pete Booker. Oh, well, we already <laughs> did business. Glad to know you, Tonto. Farabelle will sure be glad to see you on your part. She's in town right now, getting supplies and mail. I drove her in from the ranch. How, Clarabelle? Well, she's all right, big and sassy as ever, but she's in trouble up to her ears. Oh? What wrong? Mortgage trouble. The bank's holding the past due mortgage on the ranch, and if it's not paid this week, well, she stands to lose the property. Oh, that's bad. Only $500, but it might as well be 5000 Oh, golly. Meeting you, Tonto, I got sidetracked and most forgot why I came here. Why did you come here, Thunder? I'm uh, looking for John Gregg. Banker like Hobbs said I might find him here. Maybe he'd buy my mule so I could help Clarabelle. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, maybe he would. Say, uh, who is John Gregg? I, I never heard of the gent. Well, he's the engineer in charge of building that tunnel through Sawtooth Mountain. Why, that's near the far end of Gopher Canyon. That's a day's travel from here. Yeah, but Greg's been in town for the past week. Seems he ran into trouble on the tunnel job. Yeah. Ran into more hard rock than he calculated and ran out of dynamite. Wait up, but there's 20 cases of the stuff on your platform. Yeah, that's Greg's. He ordered it by telegraph, and the railroad rushed it this far. But this is as close to the tunnel as the railroad can take it. 
Yeah. Greg spent a week trying to find someone to freight the cases to his tunnel. What about Freighter Finch? He and Greg had a run-in. Yeah. It's easy to fight with Finch. He's an ornery bull guy. Yeah. He knew Greg was paying a lot of men who couldn't do a lick of work until they got the dynamite. Yeah, Finch would make the most of that. And he did. He told Greg what it had cost to freight the stuff. Greg called him a thieving bandit. Said he'd be hanged before he'd pay such a price. Uh, why the whole shipment could be hauled in one strong wagon? That's how Greg figured, but he can't find anyone who'll tackle the job. Well, is everyone scared of dynamite? Everyone's scared of Slater Finch. Is that weasel-faced little sidewinder? Finch has a monopoly on freight and thunder. He hires some mighty tough armies to keep everyone else from cutting into his business. And... Well, my ten mules could carry those cases. That's probably what Banker Hobbs had in mind when he told you to look up John Gregg. Uh, oh, Mr. Gregg. Oh, Say, are you John Gregg? Yes. You must be Thunder Martin. You hit the nail right on the head. I met Banker Hobbs on the street just after you talked to him. Yeah? He told me about you. Said you had a string of mules. Uh-huh. What's your price to move that dynamite to Sawtooth Mountain? Uh, well, uh, maybe the banker didn't tell you, but uh, I need $500. 500 Well, that's more than Finch. Now, now, hold on, Greg. I've got to have that much cash. Anything less won't help me at all. Now, if you want to buy my mules at that price, uh, I'll sell them and you can move your own freight. I could use them on the job. They could haul rock. Where are they now? At the Hornblow Ranch. Now, if you want to see him... Oh, that's not necessary. Hobbs told me about them, so I'll buy them. Greg drew up a simple agreement, paid Thunder $100, and promised to pay the balance when the mules were delivered. As Thunder finished signing the agreement, Farabelle Hornblow entered the station. Thunder, I've been looking for you. Yes. Why, Cotto. Uh, uh, oh. Well, I'm uh, glad to see you. Uh, you too, Pete. Howdy, man. Hey, Clarabelle. Uh, this is Mr. Gray. How do you do, man? Uh, howdy. Tonto, where's your friend? Uh, him in camp. Uh, uh, Clarabelle, he and Tonto are going to stop at the ranch. Well, that's they? good. That's first rate. Say, I'll dish up a fancy meal to celebrate paying off the mortgage. Huh? Did you hear that, Thunder? What? The... I'm paying off the mortgage. Are you... You are? Yeah. But we don't... With what? what? With money, you addle brain glue. Huh? I wrote to the cattle buyer in Chicago asking for a cash advance on the stock I'll sell this season, and he sent it to me. He... He did? Yep. Here it is. A bank draft. It came by today's mail. Now I'll pay the bank and burn that mortgage. Uh, oh, no. Hey, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Greg, uh, our deal is off. You accepted my money and signed an agreement. But I, 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 I'm sorry, but I've got to hold you to it. Hey, what's he talking about? Uh, you and your mortgages, right? Why in tarnation didn't you tell me you had written for a cash advance? But thunder, I... I sold my mules to save that stove-in run-down rat of yours. You what? Sold the ten poor critters into a life of misery, toting dynamite and hauling rocks. <laughs> Say, uh, listen to me, huh? I'm sorry, Martin, but I have a big payroll. My men are idle until they get the dynamite. But, uh, uh, I hate to do it, but I need those mules, so... I must hold you to the agreement. But uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe that agreement's not legal. It'll eh? hold up in court. Remember, I have witnesses. But my mules. Martin, uh, I don't care about keeping your mules, but I must have that dynamite. Uh, what? What do you mean? Uh, if you freight the cases to my office at the tunnel, I'll tear up the agreement. You, you mean you'll let me keep the long ears? Yes, and also the hundred dollars I've already had at you. <laughs> So that's a deal. I'll, I'll handle your freighting. I, uh, I'm wondering what freighter Finch will do. If, if he starts anything, he'll wish he hadn't. Word of Thunder Martin's plan spread quickly throughout the town and soon reached freighter Finch. The ruthless owner of the Star Freight Company immediately called two hard-faced men into his office. They were gunmen, known as Bull and Rook. Bull said... Well, Thunder Martin's got his nerve. Boys, you know I'll not tolerate competition. We'll take care of Thunder Martin. That's your job. But it may not be as easy as the dry gulch shooting of those two wagon drivers. Martin is tough. A bullet will stop the toughest man alive. John Gray plans to accompany Thunder Martin and the mules through the canyon. You know what that means? We'll have to kill Greg as well as Martin. Yes. You better take a third man with you. We'll take Lefty. He's been wanting a chance to earn some bonus money. Hey, well, 
You want us to handle things the same as we did before? How's that? Leave footprints while we're wearing moccasins and ride unshod horses. So the killings will look like the work of renegade Indians. Yes. And I want you to start as soon as possible. What's the hurry? Martin isn't going to leave town till midnight. They won't reach the entrance to the canyon for daybreak. I know that. I want you men to ride through the hills on the north side of the canyon as far as Dog Leg Bend. I know where that is. Now, at that point, the walls are only about 20 feet high. You'll have no trouble getting into the canyon. Wait in ambush behind some boulders. Yeah, we savvy, right. boss. We get lefty and be on our way within a half hour. Meanwhile, Toto rejoined the Lone Ranger in camp and told all that had happened at the railroad station. The Lone Ranger listened attentively to the details of the monopoly of Freighter Finch, the suspicion that the freighter was responsible for the murder of two wagon drivers and the deal that Thunder Martin had made. When Toto finished his report, the masked man said, I've heard about Finch and his monopoly. Uh, him plenty powerful, plenty dangerous. Only because he has gunmen working for him. You think him try to stop Thunder Martin? Yes, Tonto. Unless he stops Thunder, he'll lose his monopoly. And Thunder in danger. Both Thunder and John Gregg. Oh, that's right. And another thing. If Finch prevents the delivery of the dynamite, he'll hold up work on the tunnel. And that tunnel is necessary to the expansion of the railroad. And Finch block railroad. Yes. When are Thunder and Gregg leaving Rock City? Tonight. Midnight. Him start then to reach Gopher Canyon by daybreak. Then him have daylight for a trip through canyon. That's a desolate canyon. It's a logical place for an ambush. Now, Sam, Silver. Uh, what we do? I'm going to ride to the canyon entrance. That's Silver. I'll hide near there and watch to see if any men who might be ambushers enter the gap ahead of Thunder. Me go with you? Ride with me as far as Rock City. You go into town and keep your eye on Finch. If you learn that he's planning something, come to the canyon and tell me. Otherwise, join Thunder Martin and travel with him. Uh, be savvy. I'll be at the canyon when you get there. Ready to start? Uh-huh. All right, let's go. Easy, steady, steady big fellow. Come on, Thunder! Come on! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakery, things haven't changed much over the years, like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich, old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Marita. Marita enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. to continue. Easy, it was after dark when the Lone Ranger drew rein near the canyon entrance, found dense underbrush to conceal himself and Silver, and began his vigil. At dawn, the mule train arrived. The masked man greeted Thunder Martin and met John Gregg. Then he reported. So far, no one's gone into the canyon. That, then we needn't be looking for them, boys. The killers might ride after us. I don't know. Stay here to watch. Anyone who starts to the gap will have some explaining to do. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited for some time. Then the masked man looked at his watch and said, I thought the gunman would be here by this time. Maybe Finch not try to stop thunder. I can't believe he'd let anyone challenge his monopoly. Let's see if anyone's in sight. Much brushwood here. Yeah. Come this way. The Lone Ranger and Tonto headed north along the base of the steep slope. When they'd walked about 50 yards, the masked man said, When we reach the end of the brushwood, we'll have a clear view of the open plain between here and town. Ah. Anyone come, we see him a long way off. Oh, this'll do. Yeah, I don't see. Tonto, look at these tracks. Ah. Them come from direction of town. Three horses. It was before I started watching. Otherwise, I'd have heard them. Them go up slope. The horses were unshod. That's right. 
Maybe owned by Indians. Or by white men who wanted Indians to be blamed for murder. Remember the wagon drivers who were shot? He must have Yes. Maybe killers right through hills. Reach Canyon ahead of mule train waiting in ambush. Back to the horses. Uh, we go after Thunder, give him warning. I'll try to overtake him in time. He ran to town for the sheriff. Uh, me do that. Tell him what we found. And tell him there's a chance to catch the men who killed two wagon drivers. Me savvy. Easy scout, easy for her. And tell him to hurry. Get him up. Come. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, hurry away. The floor of the canyon was rocky and uneven, but the sure-footed Silver raced ahead as if he knew that human lives depended on his speed. Come on, Silver! After riding at a grueling pace for some time, the Lone Ranger rounded a bend and saw the slow-moving mule train. At the sound of Silver's hoofbeat, Thunder Martin turned, and the masked man shouted, Stop those mules! Thunder, stop the mules! Ho, oh, oh, oh. What's up? Are gunmen coming this way? I think three gunmen are waiting in ambush. Huh? I'll ride ahead of you. If I'm wrong, there'll be nothing lost. Now follow me. And if you hear gunfire, you'll know what it means. Come on. Meanwhile, the three gunmen had left their horses at the top of the canyon and descended by using projecting rocks as steps and handholds. They sat on the ground close to a boulder, large enough to conceal them from the view of anyone approaching from the east. When they heard the sound of an approaching horse, Bull peered past the side of the boulder and drew back quickly. Someone, Bull? Yeah. man just came around Dog Lake Bend. I don't know who he is, but I think he's wearing a mask. And now, who's wherever he is, he's sure to see us when he comes abreast of this rock. Yeah, and later, if he hears about the ambush, he'll remember it. You think he'll go to the law? I don't know, but we can't take chances. I'll give him time to get closer, then I'll plug him. Come then, Martin might hear the shot and suspect an ambush. Can't be helped. Ranger had never been more alert. After making the sharp turn at Dog Leg Bend, he thought he saw a slight movement at the edge of a boulder some distance ahead. He watched that point closely while he drew a gun and held it ready. When Bull's hand and gun appeared, the masked man fired. This way, Silver. Quickly turning his horse, the Lone Ranger fired again. Come on, Silver. He fired several more shots over his shoulder while retreating at top speed. His bullets glanced off the rock kept the gunmen from exposing themselves to shoot back. Oh, oh. The Lone Ranger drew rein beyond the dog-leg bend, where he could not be seen by the men in ambush. Easy, steady, big fella. In the distance, he saw Thunder Martin, who had heard the gunfire, halted the mule train, and ridden ahead to investigate. In a moment, the big man brought his horse to a halt at the Lone Ranger's side. Oh, 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 oh. I heard shooting. The cooks are in ambush about a hundred yards beyond the bend. Let me at the pole, cat. Oh, wait, Thunder. You can't hit them. They're behind the boulder. We've got to shoot it out if we expect to reach the tunnel. I know a way to capture those men. But, oh, we can't be bothered with prisoners. Now, listen to me, Thunder. The canyon wall is only about 20 feet high. I can easily climb to the top. I'm up there, I'll be able to... Though some time had elapsed since the shooting, Bull still grumbled about the destruction of his gun. I'll kill that masked man if it's the last thing I do. I never saw such shooting. The way he fired from the saddle and hit your gun. Good luck. That's all it was. Well, you'd better forget your gun and decide what we're going to do now. Wait right here for the mule train. What do you think we're going to do? But maybe the masked man warned Martin. Maybe the mule train won't come past here. It's got it. They can't reach the tunnel without passing here. I just hope I get another chance to drill that mask hombre. Well, make sure you shoot first. You've only got one gun left. If he smashes that one... Hey, look out! Hey, there, behind us, something blew up. Look at the smoke. In a hole in the ground. That was dynamite. Hey, what the... Hey, he's above us up there. Looking up, the ambusher saw the Lone Ranger on the rim of the canyon. He held dynamite in one hand and a gun in the other. This time I'll kill you. No. Oh, you blame fool. He did it again. Smash my other gun. Anyone else want to no. fly? No, don't shoot me, please, mister. Stop your gun. Raise your hands and get out from behind that boulder. Listen, Gunslick. I'll make a deal with you. If you're not out from behind that boulder within three seconds... I'll light the fuse on this dynamite and remove the boulder. No, no, not that. I'll do what you say. Yeah, I'm moving. Come on, Paul. You're through, same as we are. We can't fight dynamite. The Lone Ranger held his guns on the three men until Thunder and Greg rode from beyond the bend and tied the prisoner's hand. The masked man then descended to the canyon floor and called to Silver as he joined the group. Yes, Silver! There, these cooks are wearing moccasins. Yes, and the horses they left up above are unshod. You cooks plan to murder us just as you did the wagon drivers. Have the Indians blamed for the crime. The marks of your horse's hoofs and your own feet 
will tie you into the murder of the wagon driver. You three are going to hang. No, no, not me. I wasn't with Rook and Bull on those jobs. Shut up, Leffy. Why should I hang with you two? I'm telling the truth. That's the only way you'll save your neck. Did Finch hire you to ambush Martin and Greg? Yeah. Finch hired us for this job, but he hired only Bull and Rook for the murder of the wagon drivers. I'll tell everything. I'll sign a statement. I'll testify in court. I'll do anything you say, but don't let them hang me. You squealing Kyle. The sheriff will be here. He'll take your statement. Easy. Come on. I'll go to meet him and tell him the killers are captured. But wait. We'll meet again, Greg. Thunder, I'll see you soon. Adios, Betsy. Adios. Come on, Silver. That, that mask man saved our lives. Yep. And he saved your tunnel, Greg. Now you've seen for yourself that there's no one like the Lone Ranger. Adios, Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there like you used to remember. The Devil Delight, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flip. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Listen to the Lone Ranger... So it's up to us to take precautions in case Jake gets out of that jail. Late that afternoon, Sheriff Dale sat at his desk waiting for the guard to return from the cafe with the prisoner's food. His office was a large one-room building with two cells facing a corridor that led to a rear door. The sheriff glanced at Jake sitting sullenly on the cell bunk. Then the guard entered. Yes, here's the tray for the prisoner. Good. We'll feed him early and get it over with. Now that you're back, I'm going to the cafe. When the deputy comes in, tell him to stable our horses that are still at the hitch rack behind the office. We won't need them anymore this evening. Yeah, all right, Sheriff. I'll see you later. Right. Well, I might as well give you your supper, mister. Balancing the tray on one hand, the guard, following instructions, used his other hand to unlock the cell door. As he opened the cell door, he dropped the keys. Oh, doggone it. Here, you take the tray while I... Take this! No! Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.